Hello, welcome back. <clears throat> it's Rapid Regeneration. I'm David Escamilla. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not making any claims about diseases or medical claims. I am somebody who is committed to helping you and I'm on a mission to help you. Uh, if you're having a health problem, you're trying to solve it naturally. If you're trying to get to the next level in terms of your energy, your vibration, <clears throat> your spirituality, uh, as you're dragging around this physical unit on, on the planet Earth, um, but you know that you're a spiritual being and that you can go to the next level. <clears throat> but mostly, I'm inspired to help people who are in a very desperate place like I was um, many years ago in 2015, well, in 2011, really, I, I got totally uh, devastated health-wise. I overdosed on medication um, accidentally, well, sort of on purpose, but I didn't mean to cause all the damage that I caused and, um, and basically just completely messed up my whole nervous system, my whole respiratory system, my whole everything got messed up and I felt horrible. And for four years, I just thought I was going to be like this forever. And, and I discovered some of these amazing, um, <clears throat> keys starting in 2015 and healed myself up within a few years. And since then, I'm now just, I can't go back now. I just have to be healthy now and, and live, live a healthy lifestyle. So that's my story, but I'm committed to helping you, whatever you're going through, however daunting it seems, however hopeless it seems, and maybe you think, you know what, it works for Dave, but I just don't know if it's going to work for me. This stuff is amazing and miraculous, and it's not just me. There's so many thousands, tens of thousands, if not more, people who have used these natural methods to activate their self-healing process and completely turn themselves around. So we're done covering the food stuff and I'm as relieved as you are. Some of that felt like we were in the classroom a little bit, a little bit academic, which uh, I'm not the most nerdy uh, person out there, but it was important to cover that uh, because there has to be a foundation of logic to do this information about the food and how you approach food. So if you went through all that, now you know how the world of food works, how it interacts with your body. Now, we're gonna get to the tips and tricks for you. There's some amazing tips and tricks, um, biohacks, shortcuts, um, and, and, and amazing things. There are a couple last housekeeping items in terms of things that you're going to come up against no matter what. So this is like how to deal with germs, okay, threats, harmful organisms, biological threats out in, the, in this world we live in. That we, get, we need to address that. You need to know about that. And then some other items like how to, how to, how to deal when you're, when you're eating healthier, how to deal um, in this world and kind of um, sort of what does a day look like and, and how to balance that. Okay, so just a couple last items <clears throat> and then we're going to get to the tips and tricks for you and you can always skip ahead, you can go out of order, just follow your own curiosity, but I did put this together in a sequential order in a way that is supposed to be, for your benefit, uh, logical, one thing building on the next in an in in a order. So this one is basically how to deal with outside threats, bacteria, germs, harmful organisms, and the immune system. <clears throat> and you might find that this is, is, is somewhat relevant to today's world. Uh, now this is a contentious topic and there are some nuances and this should help you. Uh, but basically there's extremes on both sides. You know, and on the one hand, you have people that are basically, I mean, you look around in today's world and there's really, there's a lot of, frankly, germophobia going on. 
You know, you have people that want you to go through life like a bubble boy or a bubble girl and basically pump your gas while you're wearing latex gloves and um, sanitize your hands after each time you shake someone's hands. Basically stay in your house and just live in a sterile environment devoid of life. <clears throat> so that's one extreme. On the other extreme, there are some individuals out there. Now, this is a smaller minority of people, but that basically say, well, bacteria is good and we need bacteria in our body's microbiome. So just bring it on. Bring on maximum bacteria. And basically, this person will eat food off a dirty table and you know they won't care if someone's coughing and sneezing on them and 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 they'll or and they'll basically French kiss anybody, um, you know, who is willing. And so, you know, that's a bit of a caricature, but those are kind of the two extremes. And in my view, you know, the truth is somewhere in the middle. And I want to acknowledge the legitimate points of both sides of basically supporting the, the idea that we should have interaction with bacteria and that we should we should basically um, uh, invite that or be open to that and then also knowing that okay there is a such thing as harmful organisms and here's what to watch out for so I, I do acknowledge okay the amazing power of bacteria and all the bacteria that live all throughout our bodies primarily in the gut the lymph nodes the lymphatic system but really all throughout the whole body is beneficial bacteria. These are the janitors of the world and we live in harmony with bacteria and basically they help to alkalize the chemistry of the body because they eat acids and wastes and toxic materials. And so what happens is that they eat a, they eat a waste with a very low pH, very acidic pH and then they eat it and then they excrete their waste. Well, after it gets processed and they, they excrete it out, the pH is higher. In other words, it goes from being more acidic waste to less acidic waste um, after they eat it. So they're basically a pre-filter. They're helping your lymphatic system, your kidneys, and your eliminative organs. And they're doing you a big favor in that way. So that's the big benefit of bacteria. That's why, uh, yes, if you don't get the right kind of bacteria from your food, from raw foods, um, you know, if you're just eating all cooked foods and you're not getting good probiotics, if you don't get good prebiotics, if you're not getting good fiber and good um, healthy ingredients that, that encourage beneficial bacteria, how about if you're taking a bunch of antibiotics and you're killing off your body's microbiome. All these things are very <laughs> detrimental to the balance of having good bacteria. So that's the that's the um, case for germs and bacteria and, and allowing them in some level into your body. Now also, there is a case to be made about the immune system. And basically the immune system gets strengthened and conditioned and toned um, and refined from stimulation from the outside environment. And I know that you know this already. It's just, uh, it's for some reason in recent times, it seems like people have, have forgotten about this. Uh, your immune system is an intelligent network. It learns from data inputs. So basically an outside threat gets exposed to your body then your own defense mechanism builds up your and cellular intelligence, which protects you against that specific harmful entity. So without this exposure to actual threats, the immune system has nothing to learn from and it will become weakened. Just like uh, if you don't work out, if you don't exercise, your muscles will weaken, they'll become atrophied. If you don't move your body, if you don't ever pick things up, if you don't ever lift up weights or do resistance training, your bones will weaken, your bone density will weaken. 
if you don't challenge your immune system, it will weaken. And people seem to have forgotten about this. People just say, I'm gonna stay in my house because I'm scared of outside threats to the immune system. And that's, depending on the situation, that's like saying, I'm not gonna go to the gym to work out because I'm scared that uh, someone's gonna spill their water bottle and I'm gonna slip on a puddle of water and I'm gonna get hurt. So you're scared of the risk of getting hurt if you go work out, um, but if you don't work out, your muscles are gonna atrophy and the risk is worse, the consequences are worse. So the consequences of never challenging your immune system are worse than whatever is out there. Now obviously there are some exceptions to that. You know, if you're, <laughs> you know, you, you don't necessarily wanna be, um, you know, like if they're, if you're in a hospital ward, right, and people are just, <laughs> uh, you know, left and right, they have something, something crazy going on. You don't necessarily want to go and just French kiss everybody in that hospital. So that's what I'm saying about the balance. But there, that's the argument for stimulating your immune system and for having a relationship with probiotic bacteria. So with all that said, okay, yeah, I'm not recommending you go through a hospital ward and French kiss everybody. I'm not recommending that you go into a butcher shop and start licking all the countertops. Um, I'm not recommending that you prepare your meals on the kitchen floor or that you go weeks without showering or that you go to bed without brushing your teeth. So that's the level of common sense and intuition involved. Okay. We all know that that there's some level of hygiene that is that is a good thing. So um, here's the other thing too is that sometimes it's not in many cases it's not about the the poisonous toxins and chemical. Uh, I mean I'm sorry it's not always about the biological threat. A lot of times it's more about the poisonous toxins and chemical pollutants. So. When people are so gung-ho about bacteria and they're like, oh, I'll just eat whatever, or I don't care, I'm not gonna, you know, I'll touch whatever dirty area. Um, that may be fine to get the bacteria from that, but, but that area may still have a lot of toxins and poisons and pollutants. So here's a good example. Okay, you have dust mites. So if you have an area that's not cleaned, uh, it gets all dusty and you get dust mites. Well, dust mites themselves, if you consume them, if they make your way, their way into your body, or you breathe them in, or whatever, they're not particularly harmful in terms of a biological threat. However, dust mites, they create their own wastes. They excrete their wastes, just like all living things do. And these wastes are toxic and acidic and poisonous. So you would not wanna be having these dust mites around, not because the dust mites are, are harmful, but because their wastes are. And so the same areas that you may feel like avoiding because of quote germs, like uh, or a real biological threat, you know, a dirty floor or a public bathroom toilet or a stray alley cat, you know, the, your instinct is, is likely correct that these areas are threats but not so much on a biological level as much as they are on a chemical or a toxic level. So it is understandable that you'd wanna avoid contact with, with certain spaces for this reason. Um, so there's also no question there are harmful organisms out there. So not all you know, other life forms are good that we're consuming, I mean, We've covered this. We've talked about parasites, harmful organisms. There are invasive life forms. There's parasites you would not want inside your body. And this is the point of the immune system. So, you know, as great as beneficial bacteria is, you know, your immune system recognizes this and it doesn't kill the beneficial bacteria. It kills an organism that's harmful and that's a threat. So, Basically, the, there's parasites out there, you know, and, and by now, if you've covered the other section on parasite cleansing, 
and, and harmful organism cleansing and all the information, by now you know that these are very, very antagonistic, unhealthy uh, things for your health. And, and they can absolutely have negative effects on someone's functioning. So it's understandable if you wish to avoid these things. And if you have not done a parasite cleanse, absolutely, absolutely, that's a must. Raparegeneration.com forward slash parasite cleanse. So that's kind of the my view on both extremes. Yes, we need beneficial bacteria. Yes, we need stimulation to the immune system but basically there is a world of parasites and harmful organisms that if you can help it don't consume them in the first place you know and yes if you have a if you have a raw if you have two knives if you need to cut up a piece of fruit and there's a knife that was just used to cut up raw meat and another knife that's totally clean, I mean, use the clean knife. I mean, this is just common sense because um, depending on how toxic you are <clears throat> and how weak your immune system is, it could be a lot of work if you infest yourself with parasites and they, you know, reproduce. You know, it'd be a lot better just to not do that in the first place. So um, everyone knows there's parasites. with parasites in the world of humans without giving yourself extra parasites. So lastly, just, just to give you some insight on my own evolution and my own approach to this over the years is when I was first getting into detoxification and cleansing back in 2015, 2016, you know, I was, you know, I was a little bit obsessive um, at the time, I was really cleaning myself out and I did get a little obsessive with cleansing it, clean, cleanliness. I would do things like wash all my food. I would wash my car interior, my home with a natural cleaner. I would sanitize my hands after being out in public for a while. And some of my close family, you know, they, they, they probably would have described me as a bit of a, of a germaphobe during this time, people that were around me. And, you know, I, I was a little bit like a stereotype. And at the time, my thought process was just that I really was working on getting myself cleaned out, detoxed, um, harmful organisms, parasites out of the system. And I, I didn't want to give my body any extra work or my immune system any extra work. That was my thought process. Now, years later, um, you know, I've, I'm so much more relaxed and loosened up. So I really don't worry about stuff like this anymore. Um, I do have an awareness about level of toxins and potential harmful organisms. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I, I really don't worry about to quote germs now. And I'm a much laid back, more laid back individual now. Again, common sense. I don't like to walk around barefooted in a gym locker room at, or in a sauna or in the shower at, at, a, at a public place like that. Um, I do filter the air inside my home um, using a high quality filtration unit. You know, I'm, I'm very disciplined about oral hygiene. Um, I take very good care there. And um, I do shower, every, you know, at night before going to bed. My sheets are all clean, you know, and I'm a little more careful these days about who I, I French kiss with. Um, although I don't mind a few extra germs here or there. So I'm very laid back now. And, you know, but my immune system, it seems like it's very strong now. You know, I really have not been careful about physical contact with other humans. Um, you know, even... My, my nieces, my sick nieces will cough in my face or they'll put their fingers in my mouth. And 
I still haven't like caught a cold or something because of some some such uh, exposure. So yeah, I mean, I'm really laid back about it now. I still will like um, after pumping gas. I do have a natural hand sanitizer. I'll, I'll I'll sanitize with. I don't like to touch a urinal flush knob. I'll try to touch it with my foot if I can, you know. And so there are things that still gross me out a little bit, but. Overall, I'm very laid back. I'll, I'll shake anyone's hand or hug them or, um, or what have you. Um, but yeah, the the last the last note I'll touch on is is after you gain a higher level of awareness of this about harmful organisms and their proliferation, and if, let's say if you get yourself really cleaned out, detoxed out, do the parasite cleanse. Um, you might look at sensual relationships and physical intimacy differently uh, you might find that one of your old lovers just doesn't taste as sweet anymore um, and you may just become more sensitive towards individuals maybe who are full of toxins and or parasites and or harmful organisms so this isn't necessarily easy to navigate this can be a challenge for sure. Um, and I would say go with your gut in terms of how to associate yourself, you know, in this world that is ever evolving. It's getting crazier and crazier all the time in terms of this bioelectrical chemical world that we're in with other humans. So that's the last thing I'll touch on. Um, I do notice very much if someone has bad breath, if someone smells, you know, their BO, or um, if someone seems like maybe they're being influenced by by something um, internally, I think a lot of times alcoholics and people that are uh, very dependent on alcohol, a lot of times they have like a fungal overgrowth or candida, you know, yeast kind of a thing going on in their body that's that's influencing them to basically give them complex sugars, give them, give them alcohol, give them fermented foods and, and alcohol, which is fermented. And it's, it's not all about the willpower and everything. It's literally a physiological thing that kind of takes over. So you can become a little more sensitive to that. It's a little freaky. Sometimes you walk around, it's like invasion of the body snatchers. But anyway, so if you do feel the need to clean your environment, which you should, you should, you should clean things, you know, every once in a while, and uh, and limit your exposure. You know, here's some natural products I use over the years. Um, you know, your produce wash to clean your your produce. Um, that's rapidregeneration.com forward slash produce wash. How about just a household cleaner that doesn't have all the chemicals and harmful fragrances and poisons? Is rapidregeneration.com forward slash cleaner. And hand sanitizer, organic hand sanitizer, keep it in your car, natural. Um, you can find that forward slash hand sanitizer. And then a home air filter. I love this thing. There's so many toxins in the air, um, even if they're not harmful organisms per se. Um, they're, you know, just make sure it, it could be, you could have fungus or mold or different, different harmful organisms floating around filter your air, do it for, do it for your sake, um, rapidregeneration.com forward slash air filter. So that's it. Um, we're going to plow ahead. I hope that helps. And please know if we ever meet in person, which I hope that we will, I'll definitely shake your hand. I'll definitely give you a, give you a hug, uh, without thinking twice. Um, unless you don't want to, I understand, but anyways, um, Okay, well, let's plow ahead onto the next segment. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was relevant, especially to this world that we're in now, this environment that we're in with extremes on both sides. So use your common sense, use your gut, rapidregeneration.com. Bye for now. For more information, please follow at Rapid Regeneration or visit rapidregeneration.com.